Hi everybody, this is John O'Brien from California Credence at CaliforniaCredence.com and we're going to be looking at how to use a controller to launch uh, specific songs. And so well, the way we're going to do this is uh, look at how to set up multi-tracker um, with maybe even one of your classic devices. Um, also this could be a FCB 1010 with Behringer or in this case today it's an MPD 26. Uh, I have different banks A, B, C, D, and uh, a, B, C, and D, and I can select these. Uh, the, each of these pads would be programmed to a program number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. And these uh, would launch, depending on what I pick, will launch the particular song associated with that. So um, what I use is, uh, the, the, the advantage of that is to take the multi-tracker and the iPad, and you can move remove it far away from you, so you don't have to be sitting there looking at it. Um, but on the other hand, you might want to just have it looking at, you know, where you can look at it just to monitor. Uh, the nice thing about this is just the convenience and control that you have with launching. This is the um, MIDI uh, Bluetooth uh, from Yamaha, and uh, we're going to go ahead and associate that with this iPad, and you use this program called MIDI Miter, M-I-D-I-M-I-T-T-R. And so what we have in this situation is um, we're going to associate it by going three things over to Devices. We click on Devices. We notice that the MDBT-01, which is this thing here, is not connected. So we're going to go click on that. We're connected. And then now, do not close this. Just go ahead and minim minimize it. And uh, that way, uh, if you close it, then it ends your uh, session with the Bluetooth. So in order to keep Bluetooth connected, you keep that open. So with multi-tracker, um, there are a few things that you want to set up in order to make this happen. Uh, you go under settings, and then you have the MIDI program channel assignments. And then with this kind of a thing, what I like to do is I like to just go ahead and click on this. Let's say I'm going to start out with my first song is going to be Born on the Bayou. And uh, where is Born, Born on the Bayou? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit Learn. And then I'm going to hit number one, and that's going to be my first song. And then I hit, okay, great. I add that. And then you don't hit the add button until everything is set up. Maybe my next one is going to be Green River. And so I'm going to go here to Green River, and then I'm going to hit learn, and then I'm going to associate it with that pad. And I'm going to go ahead and hit add. And then we go on down the line. Say we're going to go Dreams. Um, and uh, we might want to, uh, you know, do listen to the music. Uh, I'm going to do a few of these here uh, just to show you how easy this is. Listen to the music, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit learn. That's going to be song number four, and we're just going to add that. Now what I've done is my controller has now learned uh, what songs I have. Now the other thing that I do is, so I set up these pads here, uh, these two. This is the stop. Uh, this is in case I launch a wrong track and the band says I'm not ready and we need to stop. This means, okay, they're ready. Now I can just go ahead and restart. Um, so I set up these fail safes because ch generally sets are about um, 11 songs long. So you'd probably go up to, these are 8 and then 9, 10, 11. Uh, you have like this top row that you can use for controllers. How did I get these? I just hit learn and then for start. There we go, it's learned that one, and then I go learn for here, no, not that one, this one, and then that would be uh, 39. So, uh, and I can reverse them, oh, I want that stop, and I want that start, you know, well, fine, you know, we just go like this, and there. Now, uh, that's uh, start, and this is stop, but I prefer to have it the other way around. I like to have the start a little bit harder to find and the stop being something that's very much easy to find. The other thing that you want to program in is what we would call the bus. Now I'm using a uh, four channel audio interface, so I have bus one, two, three, and four, and um, bus one and two are stereo, so I made them the same control number. Again, you can hit the learn, uh, you know, hit the learn button here and press whatever you wish. You'll notice it's at 24. I don't want that, I want it to be 20 because so, I know it's that fader, and so that's how I set this all up. So that way, <clears throat> I know that my front of house is bus one and bus two, my bass is usually bus three, and my in-ears uh, click track and trigger tracks are usually bus four. 
this is going to give me control over uh, volume levels levels um, so another important thing is you want to make sure to have the start song after being selected on this program change uh, so that the song will start so let's go ahead and let's go into a uh, situation I'm going to clear this playlist we're in our uh, view here we're on fortunate son remember we're launching the first track Okay, so if I'm launching the first track, here we are. I just hit program one. Remember, we did bayou. this over here, uh, Born on the Bayou. So here we are. Born on the Bayou is rolling. And uh, so, and the nice thing about it is, if my next song, if I'm here and I just turn off, I have pause between songs off, a very cool feature is, so this is showing what's playing and this is showing what's going on. But let's say while this is playing, I want to queue up the next song to automatically start. So Born on the Bayou is playing, Green River is going to start. So let's take it to the end of the song. We only have a few seconds left. Now as this song ends, because over here I have Pause Between Songs is off, it's actually just going to launch what I have queued up for the next song. And the cool thing about that is, is now I have a fluid running so that there's no awkward pauses between songs. But let's say I've changed my mind a few times. Okay, after Green River, I want listen to the music. And then it's like, ooh, wait, no, it wasn't listen to the music, it was Dreams. No worries, we're on Dreams. Dreams is what's cute. Wait, back to listen to music? No, I've changed my mind. Uh, oh no, okay, Dreams, yeah, that's what I want. Uh, this is keeping track of what your selections were um, as you're playing. Um, and the nice thing about that is, is it gives you an idea on what maybe you've been playing. Uh, it also gives you a history. Now the cool thing about the faders is that you get a chance to um, service your band members. Let's say on a particular song, say we're in the middle of the song and we're on Green River and the click is too loud and the, the band is looking at you. So because we made the fader, this is the front of house, this is bass. And this is um, your, uh, what do you call it? Your uh, in-ears, the click. Uh, I can actually, see how I'm changing that level? I can make it quieter for the band so it's not so overpowering. Um, the bass, maybe we need to eat that up on the song. Maybe we need the front of house needs to get hotter. So the cool thing about that is, is let's say for example, we're queuing up for the next song and we're in the middle of Green River and uh, we're queuing up Dreams. And we're coming to the end of Dreams here. The nice thing about that is you're going to notice that these will go back to the way they were when you set up uh, when, when it starts so that you're at the place where you had programmed the before the performance. Um, maybe you just had something that happened and uh, this will reset as it changes each song. The reason for that is because let's say for example you need to change uh, the, the click is loud all the time. That's a mixing board issue, and you need to change that at the mixing board. Um, hopefully you've set something pretty consistent here, um, so that the only thing you need to change. On the other hand, if for some reason the click just seems loud on this particular song and you're blowing out, uh, you know, you can, you can adjust it for this, for this moment while the song is rolling. But overall, that's basically um, the, the gist of it. Uh, so that's being able to use a Bluetooth Using some of your vintage gear that has the MIDI in and out, uh, you can use this stuff. Or if you have an FCB uh, 10 uh, Behringer 1010 um, or some other uh, MIDI controller, the important thing is it has to have the 5-pin DIN MIDI out. If, you ha if it only has the USB uh, Type B connector on the back, you will not be able to um, use this paradigm uh, I don't know what other kind of Bluetooth transmitter you can get for USB-B out. I'm sure there's something like that out there. But the problem is most of these devices get their power over that USB-B connector. So um, this is primarily uh, associated with um, devices that have a uh, hardware 5-pin uh, uh, MIDI out. So anyway, these are some of the more awesomeness about uh, your multi-tracker and... Uh, just an update and uh, hope you enjoy it. Take care.